In this video, we are going to talk about absolute and relative cell references with radical examples. Basically, when we need to use a absolute or relative cell reference, we can use a dollar sign before a column or a dollar sign before a row. There is many different ways that we can use the dollar sign. We can use a double dollar sign before the column and also before the row. Or we can actually use the dollar sign only before the column or only before the row. Or we can actually use the dollar sign throughout our entire formula in Excel. So let's take a look here in a practical way. How can we apply this dollar sign to lock or not a cell reference in Excel? Let's start with just a simple example. That is, I want to multiply the value A by the value B. So equal sign and then. 7, that is the first value of the first cell, times asterisk, the second value that I have. If I hit enter, of course, I'm going to have the result. And to do it again to all the rows that I have, I can simply click over the first cell and at the bottom right corner, click hold and drag down to make sure we can cope this formula down. And as we can see, if I go to any formula, let's take this 7 as reference, 1, 2, to open the cell, as we can see, this is a relative reference of the cell, because all the reference are going to follow along the drag down. Well, let's say you don't want to move a reference down with the drag down of the formula, so you can lock, you can fix the reference of the cell using the dollar sign. Let me show you here the second example, how can we do it with this radical situation. I have informations such as item, quantity, and the total sold in dollars. So let's say it's a sales report, just a simple sample. And I need to convert the dollars into euros. And I can use this factor, this conversion factor right here, 0.93. Let's do it. It's just a simple multiplication again. Equal sign and then the value in dollars times the factor 0.93 and then enter. Okay, this is the first result that I got. Now, at the bottom right corner of the cell, let's click, hold, and drag this formula down to see what's going to happen here. As we can see, we have a lot of blank cells. But why is that? Because as we learned before, whenever we drag a formula down, the references that we are using are also going to follow along and be moved down. So as we can see, the reference of the dollar is correct because I need to use now the value that is in this row to multiply by the factor, so it's correct. However, the reference of the factor is not correct because I don't have anything in this cell right here. I need to use this reference always in the 0.93 cell. So how can I lock this cell right here using the dollar sign? So let's go to the first cell, or I can actually get rid of all the other results and stick with just the first one. One, two, to open. I can, in this L3 cell, use the F4 key to help me, F4 key. And that way, as we can see, I have a dollar sign before the column and also before the row number three. That is exactly the coordinate of this cell right here. If I hit enter, the result is going to be the same. However, if I bring this formula down again, as we can see, now I have all the correct results for all the rows because let me click in this last cell right here, we can see that the reference of the dollar value is correct because it's moved down along with the formula. However, the reference of the factor is stay in the same cell because we are using here the dollar sign before the column and before the row. Instead of using the F4 key, you can also manually input the dollar sign. So let me get rid of those dollar signs. I can actually select the reference and hit the F4 key. One, two, three, okay. Now I have a standard version of the reference and I can manually input the dollar sign before the column and also before the row, like this. It's gonna work in the same way. Or you can use the shortcut key, F4 key. Now let's move on to another example where we can see different situations to use the absolute and relative cell references. I have again a sales report with month, product, and sales. Let's say I want to know what is the total sold for all the items that I have, item A, B, and C, to all the months. So I have two criteria. Let me use maybe this cell right here. 
and I want to have the months January. Let me bring this month down to Excel continue the sequence for me. And I also want to have the item A, item B, and item C. In the first cell, I want to know what is the total sold for the item A in the January month. And then if I am in this cell right here, I want to know the total sold for the item B in the, in the March month. I can use the sum if function to help me. But it doesn't matter what is the function or what is the formula that you need to use in Excel. The important thing here is, the focus of the video is, how to use the dollar sign to lock a cell in a relative or in an absolute position. So let's start with the first cell right here. Equal sign, sum if. Actually, I want to use the sum ifs with the s in the suffix because I have more than just one criteria. Two, to be honest the items and the months. So let me double click here, one, two. The sum range is gonna be the sales, and then trauma. The first criteria range, we can start with the month. Trauma, and as I selected the month as a criteria, I also need to select the January as my first criteria. Trauma, now the second criteria range can be the products. Trauma, and as I am using the product, I also need to use the item A as a criteria. And we're done. Let's close parentheses and hit enter. The result that we got is 217. So this is the total sold for the item A in the January month. But I actually need to do it all over again to all the items and all the months. But I don't want to do it manually because it's going to take me a long time. So maybe we can click in the, in the formula and bring it down and bring it to the right. But as we can clearly see, we are having some issues because zero is not the result that I'm expecting. Let me double click in this cell right here, one, two. And as we can see, the references are not where they are supposed to be. First of all, let's start with the month. I don't have a selection of the March that is the month that I need for this specific cell right here. And I also don't have the selection of the item B that is the item that I need for this specific cell. Because as we did learn before, whenever we drag a formula DAO or to the right, to the left, uh, all the references are going to follow along with this movement of the formula. So I need to fix the reference of the month in the column of the months, and also the reference of the items in the row of the items. The items can only be allowed to move to the right or to the left, but they can't be moved down or up. And the same thing can be applied to the months. They can only be moved up or down, because if they move to the right or to the left, I'm going to lose my month reference. And as we are also using the references in the data set, we can see that we also need to lock those references. I need to, the range of the month is saying the month. They can't be moved to the left or to the right. And also the, the reference of the products needs to stay in the products. And the same things applies to the sales column. So how can we do it? Let me get rid of all the results, but I want you to stay with the first one. One, two, to select. Let's start with the month criteria. We know that uh, it can be moved down or up, but uh, it cannot be moved to the right or to the left. So that way, I want to lock this reference in the W column. Let's go to this specific range, that is W3. The three indicates the row, and it can be either the row number three, the row number four, five, six, and on and on. So the row is not a problem. The problem is, the column, the W column, immediately before the W, I want to append a dollar sign like this. Because that way, I can guarantee that this range right here is only be allowed to be moved down or up. I want to do something similar to the items that I have. However, uh, the items can only be moved to the right or to the left. They can't be moved down or be moved up. We're going to lock this range in the second row because it cannot change to another row. It only can stay in the second row. That way I can go here to the X2, that is the coordinate to the item. And then I can immediately before the number two that corresponds to the row, append a dollar sign. Okay, now let's hit enter. We not done yet. However, let's see how it's gonna work. Enter, let me bring this formula down and also bring to the right. Okay, we maybe fix a part of the issue, but we also have another part to solve. Let's randomly click in the cell one, two, Okay, now the references of the months are correct and also the criteria of the items. With this portion of the problem, we're done. However, 
we also need to lock uh, the ranges in the data set, as we can see here. So let's go again, get rid of all the results and stick with the first one. One, two. Now it's time to select the column T and then hit the F4 key or manually input a dollar sign before the T and again before the letter T. I'm going to do the same thing for the column R, F4 key, and again the same thing for the column S, F4 key. That's it. Now let me hit enter. Let me bring this formula down and also to the right. And we're done. So this is how we can block cells in Excel using a relative or absolute position. And that way we can see, we can either use formulas with the dollar sign to lock a cell, or we can use a functions such as the sum ifs to solve radical problems that the one that we have here to make analysis in Excel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how can we use the dollar sign to help us on a daily basis. And if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below, and I see you tomorrow as every day has a new video. I see you there.